Hi there, in this video I'm going to configure my PLC station using the hardware configuration window. Also, during a simple project, I'll show you how the accessible notes icon can be used to see which PLCs are connected to my computer and what the set PGP interface is in Semantic Manager software. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content we have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI, and microcontroller-based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content I will be posting through the channel. Alright, let's start the video with an MP3 project. Note that you can click on this icon to create your MP3 project. Well, let's right click and add a Somatic 300 station. First, I need to configure my PLC station in Somatic Manager software. So, let's double click on this icon, Hardware, to open the Hardware configuration window. Now, inside the open window on the right side and from the Somatic 300 list, I can find and add my modules. First, I need a simple rack. As you see, 11 modules can be added to a standard rack. The first row determines the power supply type. Because I'm not using any of these power supplies of Siemens, let me leave the first row. It doesn't affect the programming step. Inside the second row, I have to specify my CPU model. I'm using CPU 315-2DP. Note that the CPU model version and also its order number can be found on the CPU. Okay, let's continue. The third row is used to determine the type of interface module. This module is used to extend S7300 stations up to three racks. Well, I don't have this module, so let me go to the next racks. Note that there should be no MPT spaces between the modules. After the third row, I should specify other modules which were installed beside my CPU. There are lots of modules. For example, CP modules are used to transfer the data in a case of not having the required port on the CPU. All function modules are intelligent modules that perform technological tasks such as position determination and other complex functions in the automation independently. My modules belong to the SM category, which is an abbreviation for signal modules. Signal modules are the interface of the CPU to industrial processes. I'm using two digital inputs, one analog output, then two digital outputs, and finally, one analog input. Now, let me find and add these modules to my project.
All right, I added my signal modules. As you see, Semantic Manager has assigned these addresses to my signal modules. Let me explain its rule. For digital input modules using this table, it shows the input image memory structure. My first digital input module supports 16 inputs. In other words, it only needs two bytes. Therefore, Semantic Manager has assigned bytes 0 and 1 for the first module. Similarly, my second module needs two bytes. PLC has skipped byte 2 and 3 and then used byte 4 and 5 for the second module. Why? Note that digital modules of Siemens support up to 32 digital inputs or outputs. In other words, 4 bytes. Therefore, Semantic Manager has reserved these two bytes automatically. Maybe I need to replace the first module with another one later, which supports 32 inputs. In this case, I can use these four bytes for the new module without changing the other addresses. So for industrial projects, I prefer not to change the default addresses. In this video, let me show you how they can be changed. For example, let's change the default addresses of the two digital output modules. Alright, I've defined my hardware. Now, let me click on the save icon. As you see, my CPU has been added to my project. As you know, this plug OB1 can be used to write my program. Note that the hardware information must be downloaded as well as the PLC program. So, let me open the hardware configuration window and then click on this icon to generate the system data inside my project. The system data includes my configuration settings and can be downloaded to my PLC. All right, as you know, beside the OB1, I can add other blocks manually. For example, let's add OB100. Now let's open the OB1 block to write a simple program. Okay, remember, based on my settings inside the hardware configuration window, I0.0 .0 and I0.2 differ to the first and third digital inputs on this module. Also, this address, Q0.0, differs to the first digital output on this module. All right, the performance of this program is similar to this electrical circuit. Let me test it. Okay, now let's test the PLC program. First, I need to run the PLC SIM simulator. Well, I can click on MRES to reset the virtual PLC. Also, let me select this item always on time. Now, I can select OB1, OB100, and also the system data 
and then click here to download them one by one. Or select the Semantic 300 station and then click on this icon to download all configuration settings and program codes. Okay, now let me test my PLC program using the simulator like the previous video. Alright, let's exit from the online mode. Note that every time I can click on this icon to see which PLCs are connected to my computer. Now, this virtual PLC is connected to my PLC via its MPI port. Let me close it and test my connections again. Well, as you see, there isn't any connection. Let me connect my PLC to my computer using its MPI port. So I need to open the options menu and select set PGPC interface. In this window, I can change the connection settings between my computer and PLC. Let's select PC adapter MPI because I connected my computer to the MPI port of my CPU using this cable. Now let me click on this icon. As you see, my PLC is connected to my computer directly using its MPI port. Pay attention. If the PLC Sim Simulator is opened, Somatic Manager won't detect my PLC. Let me test it. Okay, as you see, between the virtual CPU and my real PLC, Semantic Manager has detected the virtual CPU. I need to close all virtual CPUs to have a connection with my PLC. Again, let's click on the Accessible Nodes icon. At this time, Semantic Manager has detected my PLC. Now, let's download the Semantic 300 station to my PLC. Alright, the project was transferred successfully. Now, I can test it. Before that, let me tell you a useful point. If I change my program a little, for example, if I change this input address, I don't need to transfer the whole project again. I can save my program and then click here to transfer only the new program. Now let's test the program using my PLC. Alright, I hope you've enjoyed this video. In the next videos, I'll continue the course to learn Semantic Manager in instructions. Thanks so much for watching our videos. Thanks for watching my content. If you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me.
If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.